I'm Bruce Janey, and today we're going to take a look at the physics of throwing toilet plungers, a sport that I hope that becomes just as popular as axe throwing. I actually find the motion of throwing an axe and throwing the plunger to be about the same. Of course, this one's shorter, so the distance to the target's got to be closer. Now, for the plunger, you have to move back about six feet. Now, just like with any other sport, the key to success is consistency. I'll start by putting a marker on the ground for my foot placement. When I throw the plunger, I want to try and throw it the same way every time. As I'm throwing it, I want to observe how the plunger hits the target. If it hits with the handle side down, it means I'm too close. I need to move further away from the target. That's better. If I'm standing at my starting point and I throw the plunger and it hits like this, with the handle side up, that means it's rotating too much. I need to step closer and try it again. The goal is to have it hit as level as possible. Now when I got started in this, I tested out quite a few different plungers, but before I bought any, I actually tested them out against the floor. The idea was to throw the plunger down and see if it sticks. All right, let's take a look at these. Seem kind of cheap. It's a non-stick suction cup. Let's give it a try. <laughs> well, I'd say that's a no. All right, let's give this one a try. Okay, that works. Of course, sticking to the floor doesn't necessarily mean they're going to throw well, so I ran some additional tests, and these two were my finalists. I'll throw each plunger 75 times, counting up the number of sticks and also the number of bullseyes. The black plunger stuck 68 out of 75 times. The red plunger only stuck 58 out of 75 times. Well, those results are pretty much what I've been finding all along. Now, I'm not getting paid to promote a plunger here, but if I had to pick one, this would be my first choice. Now, you may have noticed that some of my plungers have tape on them, and that's more than just for decoration. I found quite a few people try and throw the plunger too hard, and if it hits wrong, they can break. We've broken quite a few plungers and it looks like they all break at about the same spot. So what we want to try and do is reinforce that center of the handle where it's getting the most stress. I found a few layers of heavy duty duct tape works well with additional tape over the seams. One other thing I like to add to my plungers are rubber handles, and these are simply cut from an old bicycle inner tube and slid over the end of the handle. There we go. Now if you really want to make them indestructible, one layer of duct tape and then a sleeve of thin-walled PVC pipe. And I've thrown this as hard as I can, and I still haven't been able to break it. I've used a variety of things for targets. For example, this table works well. Turn it around here. We can see I have the one set of legs extended and the other ones folded under. My favorite target is a piece of sheet metal on a wooden pallet. Here you can see I've added legs to it to make it stand upright. The mass of the pallet makes it very sturdy. I actually like the idea of a freestanding target. We don't have to worry about hitting things behind it. Uh, we can put it outside wherever we want to. We've actually taken this to a couple different community events and also to some picnics.
Now, the flight of this plunger is going to follow the same type of path as any other object that's thrown. For example, this ball. Its path is generally described as a parabolic curve. How can this be the same path? Now, it's hard to see it because this is spinning, but what about if I throw it without a spin? Well, let's try it with this javelin. We can see its path looks much like the balls. It's also easy to see if I throw the plunger sideways. I don't see it with an underhand shot. Flipping the plunger up in the air also gives a parabolic curve, and its path should look like this. But when I watch it, it looks like it's wobbling. So how can their movements possibly be the same? The answer is to only look at part of the plunger. If we locate the center of gravity, that's also going to be the center of rotation. I'll mark it. So as the plunger is thrown and rotates, it's that position that follows a parabolic curve, just like the ball. Even in slow motion, well that's still too hard to see, so we're going to try it again at nighttime. Starting with the javelin, I put this little light on it. This is what it looks like in the dark. Now let me throw it. It had a little wobble to it, but overall it has a nice smooth arc to it. Now let's try it with a plunger. The blue light's at the center of rotation, red light's at the handle, green light's on the plunger. Here it's lit up. Now let's see how it looks when I throw it. I want to see what happens with that center of rotation. So the center of rotation gives us a nice smooth curve as the rest of the plunger spins around it. Let's see what it looks like when I flip it upwards. That blue line represents the center of rotation, and we get a nice smooth arch. Going back to this picture, it looks like they match. Let's see what the underhand throw looks like. Here it is in the dark. Once again, the center of rotation position gives us a nice smooth arc. Viewing it in daylight, it's just hard to see when you have the movement of the whole plunger. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you try this for yourself. And if you get good at it, try throwing two at once. Anyway, thanks for watching.